Hi, students. Welcome. Namaste. Jameson here, back to share some more yoga and something that is near and dear to my heart. How do we do a push-up? What? A push-up? I thought this was yoga. Yes, this is yoga. And there is a very specific type of yoga push-up called a chaturanga push-up that I would like to share with you. And the thought behind this is students always ask me, how do I get stronger? And as we know, yoga creates or it facilitates, it helps improve your balance, your flexibility, and also your strength. So for some of us, we are very flexible, not very strong. Others, we might be very strong, not so flexible. Some of us might need to improve our balance. Yoga helps with all of these things. And that is awesome. That is beautiful. But specifically, how do we build strength? How do we build upper body strength and core strength? Through the act of our plank pose and our chaturanga push-up. So let's get into it. Go ahead, find your seat, take a seat a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit more in depth about the what and the why of push-ups. Okay, nestle in. Get nice and comfy. Perfect. Why don't we begin here, please, with three deep breaths. Take a nice deep breath in. Let a breath go. Deep breath in. Let a breath go. Deep breath in. And let the breath go. Really good. Let's blink your eyes open. Okay, perfect. Even in a practice that is push-up forward, that is so physical, we can still bring in some of the depth of yoga through the act of intention, also through our breath. Our breath is so important. Prana, the life force, without breathing, we have no life. We can go without eating. We can go without drinking for long periods of time, but breath, not even five minutes. That's how important our breath is. The intention for today's class is connection. Connection? In what way? Well, connecting to ourself, connecting to our source, connecting to others. These are all beautiful things. Connection to our yoga mat. Our hands and our feet are the connection points in a push-up. Right now, the connection point is my sit bones to my... Uh, yoga cushion, yoga blanket. It's my legs onto the ground. And so we can think about the physical manifestation of connection with how we connect to the ground. Now, this is important. The uh, number one yoga complaint that I get from new practitioners is my wrists hurt. I hear a lot of people say, I tried yoga once and it hurt my wrist. I never want to do it again. Whoa, okay. Back to the guitar metaphor. Pick up a guitar once. You're not going to know what to do. You've got to play it and play it and play it and figure it out and learn and study before you actually have any idea. So it takes time. It takes effort. But wrist pain is a real thing. And if it hurts you, you will not want to come back. And many times we experience wrist pain because of improper engagement through our hands because we do not have the proper connection through our hands into our yoga mat. Same thing can happen with our feet or our knees or our sit bones. How we connect to our yoga mat is very, very important to build a strong foundation in the posture, which allows us to move into more challenging, into more advanced yoga asanas. So this is great because it's fundamental to everything that you will do. If you ever, uh, or if you strive to want to do a handstand to balance upside down on only your hands, then a very strong connection point is necessary because all of our weight is being balanced right here on our hands. Now, this goes a little bit deeper, remember, on the mat connection, off the mat connection. How well are you 
connecting to your peers or to your mentors or to your mentees. I think on a separate note, it's very important, I've heard good advice to have individuals in your life, to always have two mentors, people who are teaching you, to have two colleagues, people at the same level where you are experiencing similar circumstances and uh, different engagements, and then to have two mentees, two people who you can share your knowledge with. And if you have these six connections in your life, two mentors, two professional, personal relationships, and two people that you are mentoring, then you really get to experience the full breadth of learning and teaching and sharing in multiple different platforms, multiple different avenues. And so connection on the mat can lead to connection to peers, to uh, supervisors, to um, people, to students, people that you are training. And that connection to others, once it becomes free and flowing, can help us connect to ourself, to our heart center, to our own thoughts, into our own personal truth. We can get to our truth. We can get to our why. Now, this is the big why. Why am I here on this earth? Oh my gosh, what is my purpose in life? What am I doing in this universe, on this teeny tiny planet, in the vast multitude of galaxies that span the entire universe? Deep, deep questions. That depth, all from you placing your hands on a yoga mat. Now, how cool is that? The entire universe literally in your palm through this intention of connection. Okay. Whoa, we got out there. And it's cool. I love to get out there sometimes. Also, to bring it back in, push-ups. Push-ups are great. They make us strong. They help us connect to the earth. And then it takes us onto a whole new wavelength and a whole new plane into a universal connection. All through a push-up. All right. Let's go ahead and sit back. Switch the cross of our legs if you have not done so already. Perfect. Go ahead, sit nice and tall. Let's take a mindful meditation for a few moments, a few breaths. You're welcome to close your eyes. Sit up. Breathe deep. Let the breath go. Deep breath in. Big sigh. Deep breath in. Big sigh. Very nice. Let's blink our eyes open. Namaste with the intention of connection. Okay, let's start tabletop position. It's so good. We just keep coming back to it over and over again. Okay, hands plant. Hands underneath of shoulders, knees underneath of hips. Nice and easy cat cow. Let's just see how our spine is doing today. Arch back to round back, inhale to exhale, moving slightly deeper each time, really warming it up, seeing, oh, hey, how am I doing today? Pretty good, or boy, I could have used a little bit more sleep last night, or whatever it might be, we just start to check in. Good, neutral tabletop position, left leg goes long, Toes tucked, can rock forward and back. Lean forward into the strength of your hands, lean back into your toes, forward and back. Now notice in your hands, the weight shifts as you go forward and back. That's important for a chaturanga pushup. Left knee goes down, right leg extends, lean back and forward. So start to rock back, forward, back and forth. Really nice. Okay, 
go ahead and sit kneeling. If this feels okay. Remember, you might need a block between your thighs. Go there. Thread your fingers and then start to roll your wrists in one direction. Excellent. Roll your wrists in the opposite direction. All right, left hand forward, fingers down. Right hand grabs those fingers. Press your left heel away from you and gently draw your left fingers in towards your body. Stretch into wrist and forearm. Really nice. Switch, right palm out, fingers down. Left hand grabs right fingers. Press right heel of palm away from you. Very nice. Left hand up, fingers up. Draw your left fingers back. Same thing, press the Heel of your hand away from you, super good. Right palm forward, fingers up. Draw your right fingers back. Very nice. Release, flourish in your wrists, which means spin them in circles about as far as you can. Good, opposite direction. Really nice. Hands forward, straight arms, no elbows. No elbows bend, make tight fists, and then flick. Squeeze, flick, squeeze, flick, squeeze, flick, squeeze, flick, and then shake them out a little bit. Very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and come up to standing. Feet underneath of hips. Pick up your toes. Spread your feet nice and wide. Root them back down. Now press to the inner edges of your feet. Keep that. Root the outer edges of your feet. Lean hips forward, feel your toes connect. Lean hips back, feel your heels connect. Arms by your sides, soften your shoulders. Wow, how sensitized, turned up are your feet connected to the earth. The mountain pose is strong through its foundation. Your feet connect to support all of your structure on top of it. Good, let's close our eyes. Feel into the connection of your feet. Now with your eyes closed, lean left with your hips and your shoulders. Lean right with your hips and your shoulders. Lean forward, whoa, toes have to engage. And then lean back, heels engage. Now circle hips from left to right. Notice the weight shifts, inner and outer edges, but we don't fall, and why not? Because of our connection point that holds us up and supports us. You might fall, actually. Falling is not a bad thing. I don't wanna make it taboo. If you lose your balance, no big deal. Just come right back. It's okay, but for the most part, I think we're learning and exploring. We're seeing that we can connect to stability through the physical connection of our feet. Okay, good. We're getting it. Are you getting it? We're getting it. That's great. Hands go up, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart center. Again, inhale, hands up. Exhale, hands heart center. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, heart center. Half sun salutation. Inhale, hands up. Little bend in knees, exhale, wide arms, dive, forward fold. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, rise, hands high to the sky. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Hands down, really good. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, little bend in knees, wide arm, dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Hands down. One more just like that, please. Inhale, let's go up with our hands. Exhale, little bend in knees. Dive forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, let's rise. And exhale, hands to heart center. Hands down. Okay, 
move through sun salutation A, where I have been sneaking in pieces of the push-up without necessarily explaining it yet, but today we find a little bit more depth. Tadasana, mountain pose, connection through our feet, connection with our breath, connection in our heart and our soul. Let's sweep hands up, inhale. Little bend in knees, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, find a halfway lift, flat back, straight legs. Exhale, fingertips down, feet step back, plank pose. Knees go down, look forward, lean forward, lower yourself all the way down. Wrists by ribs, elbows above wrists. Inhale, little lift, cobra. Exhale, reverse. Inhale, little lift, cobra. Exhale, reverse. Inhale, little lift, cobra. Push into your hands, over knees, toes. Downward facing dog. Start to pedal and push. Fingers spread wide, palms root. Hips sway, and then you can walk your feet all the way forward. You might need to come up onto your fingertips. Halfway lift when you get up to the front. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, rise, hands up. And exhale, hands to heart center, hands down. Good old traditional sun salutations. It's really nice. Inhale, let's go up with our hands. Exhale, little bend to knees, wide arm forward fold. Inhale, find halfway lift. Exhale, bend knees, plant your hands, step your feet back. High plank. Knees go down, untuck toes, look forward, lean forward. Heart lowers down. Relax your shoulders, draw them near. Inhale, cobra, maybe press on the high cobra over your knees and toes, downward facing dog. Really, really good. Bend your knees, look forward, take a couple steps, feet make their way up, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, rise, hands up. And exhale, hands to heart center, hands down. Good, really good. Okay, now it's time to talk concepts some different concepts about connection to our core, our deep solar plexus that really is the connector for all of our limbs and our strength. It is into our core and then connection into our hands. Let's start with hands. So we have hands, do, 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 right? And we can think about all four corners. One, two, three, four. Now, this is our palm, and then these are the big knuckles underneath of our fingers, and then these are our fingers. Very basic, I know. And what I like to think of this is my big old bear paw, and then these are tiger claws. And so when we place our hands onto the mat, it is a paw and a claw. I know, kind of wild, right? But let's try this. Tabletop position. Flex your finger, or extend your finger so your, your fingers lift up. And then place just your paws, your bare paws, onto the mat. Then spread your fingers as wide as you can, and now squeeze your fingertips into the mat. Tiger claw, paw and claw. So now there's a lot of action. What we have done essentially is taken the wrist, the weight out of the wrist. You can see here, if all my weight's into my wrist, there's nothing happening here. Ow, this hurts me already. But if I spread my fingers, root down through the big knuckles of my paw, lean weight into my fingertips, and squeeze the claws into the mat, all of a sudden, there is no pain in my wrist because I have distributed the weight out of my wrist and taken it into the big knuckles of the palm and even further out into the fingers. Now, from that, start to spin circles with straight arms of shoulders around your wrists. And you can go way further forward. If you are afraid of falling on your face, I like to consider pillows also crash pads. This might be like, ooh, ooh, okay, got it. I've done it before. I've seen it before. Nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just learning. Think about when you first started to ride a bike. You probably felt, let's go the opposite direction. That's a lot of spins. You probably fell on a bike. 
I ride bikes, I still fall off my bike sometimes. And you just get back up and keep on riding. Perfect. Okay, let's sit back, shake it out. That was a lot on our wrists. Very nice. Make this and then roll circles. Yes, very good. Opposite direction, circles. Yes, very good. Whew, okay. Paw and claw. This is our connection point. This is so important for push-ups. Now, let's stand up, please. Into our standing cat-cow, I would like to teach us how to access our core. Something that is very, very important. Not supernatural, though. It's not something that's just like, oh yeah, <laughs> my core is engaged. If we haven't done much core work in the past, then it can be very foreign. What is this thing? How do I even get into it? So let's try and simplify and break it down. Okay, standing cat cows. We've got our feet a little bit wider than our hips. Lego man C grip to our thighs. We have the arch, so hips go back. And then round your back, chin into chest, squeeze your belly in as much as you can. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good. Inhale, open up. It's like we're doing crunches, standing. That's right. Exhale, breathe out. Shh. Inhale, open up. And what I expect you is to exhale. Shh. Feel a crunch in your belly. Good. Okay, let's come up. Shake that out. Nice. Cactus your arms, or goalpost your arms, but I like to think of this as a cactus. Cactus are cool. Little bend to knees. Same action, standing cat cow. Open up across your front body. Inhale. There's an arch in your back. And then bring your elbows towards each other and crunch. Hollow body crunch is what this is called. Shh. And you can make that sound shh as you bring your ribs towards your hip bones. Inhale, open up. Exhale. Shh. Inhale, open up. Exhale. Shh. Inhale, open. Exhale. Shh. Keep that crunch. Straighten your legs. Straighten your arms. Crunch more. Crunch more. Crunch more. Can you access it? Good. You go ahead and relax, please. I'll show you what shape I'm in. Can you guess? Look at my shape here. Let me just move it 90 degrees, and I'm in my plank shape with core activation. Very nice. Whew. Okay. Let's take it all the way down. So two really important uh, connection points, connection to our core and connection through our hands. Now, plank pose is a really, really great way to access strength. And we can connect that hollow body crunch core activation in our plank. And that's how our plank actually becomes a strength building posture. This is one of the ways that it opens up really, really nicely. So go ahead and find your plank. Join me here. And then lower knees down. Perfect. Root down through your palms, spread your fingers nice and wide. So we have our hand connection that we just learned. And we could even spin a circle in each direction to really feel into our fingers. Now go ahead and arch your back. And then round your back like cat pose. And go shh. Squeeze your belly. Now look forward. Lean forward. Start to bend your elbows a little bit. And then press it back. Okay, release. Good. I expect that is challenging because you are very, very engaged with these movements. Let's try that again. Palms down, fingers spread. Inhale, arch. Exhale, shh, round. Look forward, lean forward. Bend your elbows a little bit as you come way forward and then press it back and sit back, shake it out. Okay. We are building all the pieces. We are building the puzzle pieces of our Chaturanga push-up that we will then assemble and make it happen. Okay, how are we doing? Good? Amazing. Perfect. So, 
Let me demonstrate for you really quick so we can see. When we're in this shape, look at my back. Now I'm dropped down. If there was a pencil between my shoulder blades, I would be squeezing it. Now, I'm engaged. If that pencil is still on my back, it rolls off. Squeezing the pencil, pencil rolls off. And I like this because we can squeeze and then roll off. This is where I want to be. I want to be with the pencil rolled off. Can inhale, arch. Exhale, shh. Now look at my elbows over my wrist. They stay where they are as I lower down, lean forward, lower down, lean forward, lower down. That took a lot of strength. Now this is a great way to learn how to do a push-up by working the reverse. Come back up. Pretend you didn't see that because I'm teaching that next. Okay, if this is what it might look like, if we get here, so this is what I don't want to see, right? Where the back doesn't hold the core, right? This is not a push-up. Hips down and then down, right? So if we're working on strength, it's sh hollow body. Back remains flat as I go forward. Maybe it's just this far forward and then press back. This might be where your push-up is for today. A little bit of lean forward and a little bit of lean back. And that's great because if that is challenging you in a way, then you are building strength for exactly your level, and that is so perfect. There's no wrong place to be for you. Now, it's okay to want more to say, I would like to be able to do a full push-up. But if you cannot do a full push-up, that doesn't mean you will not be able to do a full push-up. That just means you need to train thoughtfully, methodically, and effectively in a way that helps you achieve that goal. And what I'm offering you here today is exactly that. It is a way to be able to learn how to do a push-up if you've never done a push-up, or to refine your push-up if you can do push-ups and you love push-ups. Remember, lots of levels. And whatever your level is, this is for you. Okay, so now that we have a foundation, let's start to build. We've got our, we'll just start in our plank because this just kind of helps locate us. Knees go down. Paw and claw, spread your fingers nice and wide. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round, find your core. Shh. Look forward, lean forward. Notice I'm broadening my shoulders, my elbows bend. I come so far forward and use my strength. Body down to the floor. Okay, you can relax here. Now we do a push-up, elbows squeeze in, chest presses down, core activates, push into your arms, and press back up, shoulders over your wrists. Okay, go ahead and step back. Very nice. So here's what I think you might be experiencing without being able to observe and diagnose what's going on. A couple things. I think you might be getting here ugh, and falling down, and that's okay, right? You just come back however you can and then work this. Forward, forward. Oh, I think I'm going to collapse, and I'm forward. This is a push-up. If you work these halfway down and halfway up, you're Muscles in your body are learning how to do the movements. Now, this is the next thing. You might say, okay, I'm down, but then are unsure about how to get back up. So you lift up into a back bend and then press yourself up. That's not a chaturanga push up. That is a back bend lift up. That places a lot of strain on our back. This is not what we want to do because there's a back bend in the whole thing. What I'm offering teaching is hollow body. Round, forward, down, and then push back up. Good. When I do this, my fingers are spread and I feel into my wrists. I feel into my hands. And in fact, you might be sore in your hands. I would like to think of it as if I were teaching you weightlifting right now and we got down and we were on the bench press and you've never done a bench press before and we put some weight on the bar or just you bench press the bar you might wake up the next day and be like, wow, my muscles are sore. Yeah, I was bench pressing all kinds of weight, and that's awesome. So think about this as a bench press, right? But it's, it's the yoga version. It's a push-up. You're literally pushing yourself up. And if you are not familiar or experienced with this, 
your hands and wrists might get a little bit sore, but please don't let this be a detractor. Please just take this as part of your growth and evolution. This is the feeling of you getting strong, and that's amazing. Okay, cool. Now, for those of us that want a little bit more, we can add in a little bit more. So let's find our plank pose. Knees down. Paw and claw the mat. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Round your back. Broaden your shoulders. Lift up your knees. Plank pose. Squeeze your belly. This is a great strength builder. Same thing. Look forward. Press into your toes to lean forward. Notice how my toes press and I come forward. As I move forward, my elbows bend straight down and I lower my body down to the floor. Perfect. Now I can take that little rest. Relax. Toes are tucked. Knees lift. Elbows squeeze in. Hands push down. And I lift back up. Chata Ranga push up. Knees go down, shake it out. Very, very good. Okay, let's clasp our hands, take it one way, take it the other way. Perfect. Let's take it down into a child's pose. It's just a nice little pause to let some of this learning and knowledge settle into our body, into our brain. So hips are towards heels, or we're up here in this more forward position. This one is really good too. Excellent. Find your breath. Breathe deep. Deep breath in. Big sigh out. Let it go. Deep breath in. Big sigh out. Let it go. Deep breath in. Big sigh out. Let it go. Very nice. Okay, cool. Let's come up, please, to standing. And now we will integrate this into our sun salutation. Here's the thing. If we're spending an hour practicing yoga, let's utilize, let's optimize this hour to help us build as much strength as possible. We move through sun salutations just about every single class, especially in these vinyasa type hatha yoga classes. And when we do these chaturangas, it's a great opportunity to tune in, tap into that yoga strength. Okay, front of our mats, please. Hands down by our sides. Inhale, hands up. Little bend to knees. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fingertips down, hands plant feet step back. High plank. Spread your fingers, root down through your palms, broaden your shoulders, hollow your body. Notice my back is slightly rounded. Option for you to take your knees down, untuck toes. Lean forward, lower down. If we're in this modified option and we need to pause halfway and press back, that's good. If we can come all the way forward and down, that's good. And then push yourself back up. Very nice. Lift up your knees. Hips go back and up, heart melts through, downward facing dog. Still in the connection of our hands and our feet. Fingers are spread, head drops down, core is active. Let's bend our knees, look forward, step, step. Toes spread, halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, full forward fold. Inhale, hands go all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center and down. Good. Let's try that again. Inhale, hands up. Little bend in knees. Exhale, wide arm, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands down. Step your feet back. I'll show the full version this time. Plank pose. You're welcome to set your knees down. From here, look forward, lean forward, press into your toes. Lower your heart down, and then press back up. We don't even have to let our body down. Now, a little bend in knees. Heart goes back through towards your thighs. Hands plant. Knees go wide. Big toes touch. You can turn your palms up slightly. Child's pose. Relax your jaw in your face. Settle into a breath. Good. <clears throat> really good. 
All right, come up and join me, please. Let's talk for a moment. So, I do not want, it is not my goal to try and ask you to do something that you cannot do that frustrates you and makes you not like yoga or makes you not like me. <laughs> it is my goal to offer things that are challenging in a progressive way, right? If we're getting to my why, like one of my whys, to offer things that are challenging in a progressive way so that you can improve and progress and feel empowered. I want to empower you through the practice of yoga by thoughtfully sequencing classes and postures in a way that help you to improve your balance, strength, and flexibility. If this is really, really hard, I am sorry, but I applaud you in your struggle to persist, and I am so grateful for you to be open to the learning that I am offering. If this is easy for you, then I am also grateful that you allow me to go so in-depth of these fundamentals. They are very, very important. As mentioned, I believe one of the best ways to get strong is to do push-ups. Now, I also like lifting weights and swinging kettlebells and various uh, fitness classes and aerobic exercises. It's all good. I love it all. But super fundamental, super basic push-ups and plank poses are so good. And I'll give you a little sneak peek caution that I know some of us are going to try this at home, but there are different arm balances and I will teach some at the end of the semester. Yes, that's true. In order to have the strength for those arm balances, we can build them here at the beginning of the class, thus me teaching this strength posture so that we have more success with more advanced postures. There is a pose called crow pose where you balance on your hands just like this. Well, these arms are these arms. So building this strength literally is the strength that we build for our crow pose. So we work on that crow strength every single time we do a push-up. Now, we may have some success at the end of the semester with this posture. We may, there's lots of versions of it. There's four points, three points on either hand, two points. There's success to be had for everybody, but I'm setting the stage for more advanced asanas. So thank you so much. Perfect. Okay. What do we do now? More push-ups. Let's do it. Thread it into our sun salutation. I'm going to challenge us by offering a few push-ups. Go ahead and stand up, please. Hands by your sides. Toes forward. Feet root. Connection through your feet. Very good. Invite in a deep breath. Let this deep breath go. Wing eyes open, hands sweep up, inhale. Little bend in knees, exhale, wide arm, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands plant, feet step back. Plank pose, knees down everyone please. Inhale, arch back, exhale, round back. Feel your core, look forward, lean forward. Let's go halfway down and then lift up, one. Halfway down and lift up two. Halfway down and lift up three. Halfway down and lift up four. Halfway down and lift up five. Knees go wide, child's pose. Soften your body, soften your breath. Really good. Keep breathing. Very nice. Okay, this also helps us. Um, if we got those, no problem. We want to move on to the next set, then we do that. If we want to stick with those and do a few more of those, that's good. If we are thinking, enough with the push-ups already, then that's okay. We're almost through them. You are cool. You are doing great. I respect that. You can just take a moment in child's pose or just watch 
so that you get the familiarity. Okay, perfect. Plank pose. Knees down, everyone, please. Paw and claw the mat. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Keep that. Look forward. Lean forward. Elbows bend straight back. Heart lowers to the ground. And then press up. Do not come all the way down. Look forward. Lean forward. Lower down. Heart hovers. And then press up. Forward down. I call this a low chaturanga, that place where we're hovering just before our body hits the floor. Let's go two more. Forward, hover, push up. And then forward, down, push up. Knees wide, toes touch. Child's pose. Deep breath flows through your body. So good. So, 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 so good. Breathe. Breathe. Okay. Challenge move, full version chaturanga push-ups. Now, let me show this from the front. In our chaturanga push-up, we're in our tabletop position. So it's not like an old school push-up where our hands are wide and our elbows bend out and we press up. Hands are in line, thus the lean forward and elbows bend straight back and up. Hopefully we've gotten that concept, but if you are working these with wide hands, bring them in line, elbows bend straight back, elbows do not bend out. There's the bit of a difference. Different perspective on that, I think, can help shift our view. Wow, a different perspective can help shape our view. Maybe that is the lesson learned that we have here. Be open to new perspectives for uh, perception shifts. What a great thing. Yoga, the ultimate teacher, huh? Okay, let's work this in our body. Plank push-ups. Chaturanga push-ups. Fingers spread wide. Hollow your front body, broaden your shoulders. Look forward, lean forward, press into your toes, lower down, low chaturanga, and then push up, and you flex your feet again. Press forward, lower down, push up, and we're back. Forward, down, push up, back. Show you from the front. Forward, down, push up, back. Forward, down, push up, back. Hips up, back, downward facing dog. Let your heart melt through. Fingers spread, palms root. We have that connection. Knees go wide, toes touch. Child's pose. If you attempted those and you feel your heart beating, that's great. Keep breathing. Yeah, keep breathing. You're doing so good. You are good. You are great. Excellent. All right, friends, let's start to come up. Sweep our feet around into seated. Some closing postures to take us down. Legs are out, right leg crosses in, left leg crosses in front of right. Hips lift up and lower. We can take our back to the wall now. Hands by our sides to lift up nice and tall through our chest. And then let's just place our forearms right here. Again, if we're rounded and we need this, we can keep the support. Good. Neck rolls. Full. 360. Neck rolls in one direction. Slow down the movement. Invite in a breath. Ah, let it go. Neck rolls opposite direction. Good. Hands stay by sides. We can use this to lean forward. Option to hands up and then hinge forward, fingertips or palms to the mat. Forearms can go down to the mat. Cross legged forward folds. Good. Settle in. Relax your teeth, unclench your jaw, soften your face. This was a very strong practice. Let's continue the intention of connection as we 
connect to our breath as we close out our yoga practice for today. Keep breathing. Breathe. Deep breath in. Big sigh. Go ahead and make your way back up. If you're at your wall, please step aside. You'll need a little bit of space behind you. So go ahead and step your feet out. And your feet are about as wide as your yoga mat. And then let both of your knees go to the right. Left knee is inside of right foot. And you can bring your right foot on top of your left thigh. Perfect. So my feet were wide. And then I dropped my left knee over. My left hip came up. Now walk your hands to the back, and I find that I need to resituate my right hip, so pick up right hip and lower. Hands walk to the back. Good. This is a pretty deep twist across my body. You can keep your heart open for an open twist, heart lifted, or if you want this to move a little bit deeper, we have an option to move down to our forearms. Now there's a lot of wiggle room with where our hips are and our shoulders are and how we're twisted in this posture. And if you go too deep, then that's okay. You just back off and reset and find a place that's nice. Wherever you are, we can start to let the weight of our head drop down and connect into our breath. Nice and chill here at the end of our session. We took the energy up, we really challenged ourselves, and now I want these final postures to be sweet, to just to feel nice, so we can embrace the empowerment, the connection to ourself, to our strength, to our truth. Really nice, friends. Let's start to make our way up. Left hand sweeps over. You'll readjust your hips down, bring left leg in, right leg in front of left. Now, when we do these postures, it's real, it's easier for me to cross up my ankles and let my knees go out because it doesn't require as much hip flexibility. It's a deeper stretch to walk feet out, cross mid shins, scoot hips back. Now all of a sudden, hello outer thighs. We can find the lift and the length. So from the side view, less flexibility required. Step out. More flexibility required. Hands back behind to, s to help support. Or we're at the wall. Hands can go up, inhale. Exhale, hinge, forward fold. And we're in. Very nice, friends. We're here for about a minute. Ah, to settle in to our breath, to settle into the posture. Think of this as a really sweet moment where we don't have to go anywhere, we don't have to do anything. We get to just be present, be in the moment. And that's awesome. Keep breathing. Very nice, friends. Let's make our way up. Fingertips go back. Uncross your legs. Feet about as wide as your yoga mat. Knees over to the left. Left foot goes into our right thigh, there's 90 degree bends in our knees. And then walk your hands over to the back. Hips pick up, lower down. And then we can use the support of both of our hands to find the twist. If we want to go a little bit deeper, we drop down to our forearms.
wherever you are, whatever your shape may look like, we can all connect into this moment, into ourselves, into our breath, into the practice of yoga, into whatever it is that you are experiencing right now. Very nice, friend. Inhale, let's start to come up. Sweep your right arm back. Let's center ourselves. You can take your feet wide and then just go ahead. Feel free to rock your knees from side to side. You can come up with a hip and a hand. It's kind of like our legs have become windshield wipers so that we can see through the heavy rain as we travel through the storm. So many metaphors, they are just non-stop, aren't they? Okay, go ahead and find yourself in the center of your mat. Grab your knees, slow curl back, hug your knees into your chest with your hands, or wrap your arms around, give yourself a nice big squeeze. Please roll your ankles in big old circles one direction. Opposite direction. And then arms can go to the inside to grab your feet. Happy baby posture. Heels stack above your knees, spine grows long. You can be playful and rock this side to side. If you feel like chuckling or smiling, that's okay. That's welcome. It's good. It's all good. Continue to breathe. Remember, if your feet don't reach or if your hands don't reach your feet, you can grab onto your shins can hold on to your thighs. Lots of adjustments to get creative in all of our postures. Very nice. Release your knees. Release your feet. Feet to the floor. Knees dip in towards each other. So feet are as wide as your mat. Knees in towards each other. Arms can go up and overhead. And you can wiggle your hips around a little side to side so you have a nice arch in your back. If this doesn't feel good in your arms, just go ahead and place them, hands by your sides, palms up. And if it feels okay, good, that's all right. Wherever you are, steady in and breathe. Breathe. Release your hands. Go ahead and take them down by your sides. Extend each leg out. You can lift your shoulders, lift your hips, closing adjustments to find yourself comfortable lying on your back or on your side. So we can let the connection sink in deep into our bones, deep into our body, deep into our soul, shining a light on our truth that exists inside each and every one of us. Shavasana is the place. It's so important. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being present. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your Shavasana.
tree. Relax your body, relax your face, relax your heart. Settle in and breathe and enjoy the peace, enjoy the space, enjoy the quiet, enjoy the connection. Be. all take a nice deep breath in and a huge sigh let it go sparkle in your fingers glimmer in your toes shimmer in your hands and your feet and stretch through your arms and your legs into a full body Yogi, stretch. Roll over either side. Make your way. Grab your cushion. Join me in a seated posture, please. Right hand on our hearts. Left hand on our core, our belly, our truth. Connection. You're welcome to close your eyes, sit up nice and tall, feel the connection flowing through you, from you to you, from you to the mat, from you to the universe. Let's bring your hands together, bow in honor of ourselves, honor of each other, in connection with self and source. Namaste. Hmm. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. I hope you feel good. I hope you are connected. Bye-bye.